All right, let's make you much more powerful when it comes to web servers. Everything I'm talking about here will also work on a home server. And I'm gonna do another video covering home servers. It's gonna be similar to this one. When we're doing that one, we'll talk about different apps. Right now, we're gonna talk about web apps. And if you're someone who's always been using like different shared hosting plans or whatever that cost a lot of money so that you can host your WordPress websites, something like this will be a much better way to do it. You'll have more control. Um, and it may seem intimidating at first, but it's gotten a lot easier over the years because there's a lot of resources online, a lot of places you can go. And what we're gonna do in this video is we're going to get a Debian server up and running. Then we're going to install Docker and we're going to install Docker Compose. And then we're going to install something called Portainer. And that's the big deal. So once you get Portainer installed, then we have a web interface that we can use to install any Docker container that we want to install. And there's all kinds of different Docker containers. Thanks to Zimaboard for sponsoring this video. I want to note that everything I'm doing in this video, even though I'm using a web server, can all be done on this because they call this the world's first single board hackable server. Look at that, we got two gigabit NICs right there. So you can run OpenSense on here. It's x86. You can run PFSense, OpenSense. You can run an emulation uh, software. You can run anything I'm showing you in this video, any version of Linux. Windows can even be put on here. And then on the back right there, we have a PCI Express slot. Notice that even a 16X card can fit in here because they left the back of this 4X slot open. So that gives you almost infinite expandability. And then on the back right here, we've got two SATA ports and there's the power for that. And you can get an adapter to run all of that right there. You can set up your entire house, home automation, whatever. This is a great place to start because you can start learning. You can start tinkering. And it comes pre-installed with Casa OS. And I would recommend checking that out first. It's a great implementation of a front end to allow you to install all kinds of Docker containers. And I'll show you more about that in a coming video in the future, but you can just jump in and start learning. And you can even install Portainer inside of Casa OS. So you've got like containers inside containers inside containers and it all works really well. This is a great tool because it'll allow you to learn. And then once you figure out exactly what you wanna do, you can use this to implement that. So check out Zima board and thanks again to them for sponsoring. Now, I wanna note something. If you have not used DigitalOcean before, this is by far my favorite hosting service. They give you servers, you can have fun with them. And if you click on the link on our website right there, you're gonna get a $200 credit that you can use for two months. And then after that, any money you spend, if you spend 25 bucks or whatever, we get $25 in credit, which goes towards helping us keep our websites up and running. So this is awesome because you can go and mess around and try different servers and not have to worry about paying for them for a couple of months. So you can really figure out, you know, do some trial and error, mess with stuff, break things, whatever. This is, I highly recommend this. So anyway, when you're on Tech Syndicate, you'll see that link just right over here on the sidebar. So go ahead and click on that and get yourself set up with DigitalOcean. Now, I've got a project started here, and right up here is where you need to click once you get logged in. Create. You have all these options here. You just want to create a droplet, which is essentially a virtual machine. And then pick the region that's closest to you, and whatever, doesn't matter. I always like to use Debian. There's a gazillion reasons for that, and I have outlined them all right up here. Why Debian? But I prefer this to Ubuntu. Some of the other ones are going to be very similar. Now, as far as what we need, you don't need much. And premium Intel is actually slower than premium AMD, which is cheap. So I'm going to go for the premium AMD. You can go for regular for $6, but for an extra dollar, this is quite a bit faster. So I'm going for the premium AMD uh, with an NVMe SSD. Much snappier than anything else. If you need extra storage, you can do that, but it all depends on what you're doing. When it comes to choosing your authentication method, I'm going to use a password for this because it's quick and easy. You can set up an SSH key if you want. Make it something secure. I'm not doing it because I'm just going to delete this when we're done. And then you can name your droplet here. I'm just going to keep it like that because I know what it is. It's Debian, one CPU, one gig, AMD, and location San Francisco 3. Put some tags here. I'll just tag this portainer so I know what I've installed on there. Create droplet. All right, you can open up Putty or I'm using Kitty, which is just a different version of putty you can open up whatever you got powershell if you're in linux just open up your terminal and get ready because as soon as this gives us an ip address we can log in and start doing stuff so i'm going to get this ready right here okay we have our ip address copying that put this on one side copy paste that here and then we can we can save this if we want to so i'm going to title this or whatever i'm going to put the whole ip address there so i don't forget what it is right, i'm going to click on save here and then just double click that to open it up click on accept when it asks i'm going to control scroll to make it bigger so you can see it logging in is root and then the password that we set, there we are. Now, it's just gonna be as simple as copying all these commands. So the first thing I like to do as soon as I open it up is just a sudo apt update, shift insert pastes, um, if you're confused, just you, you can't do control V and all that. So if you put two ampersands and then apt upgrade, it'll do, so it'll, it'll do the update and the upgrade all in one go. Say yes. 
Now, if you're on DigitalOcean in a minute, it's going to try to update your SSH settings, but we want to keep the original ones so that nothing gets messed up. So when that pops up here in a minute, we'll just do that. All right, here it is. It's asking uh, what we should keep. Keep the local version installed. Now, if you're running this at home and you have a whole bunch of updates that needed to be done, sometimes it'll ask you if you want to restart any services or whatever. Sometimes it'll even ask you if you want to restart your entire system if it's done something to the kernel. So you can go ahead and do that as well. All right, so that's everything. This is just what happens if you don't have anything installed, but we're going to scroll on down. Now it's time to install Docker CE. Grab this whole entire thing. If you just triple click, it'll allow you to select everything that's on the same line. Uh, that's really handy because a lot of times they put a, you know, like a little thing over here where you can just click on copy and it'll copy the whole thing but you don't want that like this one so you triple clicked and it just selected that one line but this one up here i triple click and it selects everything there because it all is just one line there's no break so you want to copy this i'm going to clear so we go to the top shift insert to paste and now it's installing our docker stuff docker C docker ce and all its other stuff all these are dependencies for docker i'm sorry ca certificates and all that kind of stuff all right next up we have to tell it where the docker repository is so for debian copy all this if you're using ubuntu it'll be something else that's very similar there we go and now we have to do an app to get update and that just basically updates the repository that we just put in there now we can install docker ce so you double click that Copy it in there. Good. If there's any typos over here, sorry. I'm, I typed it really fast. Getting ready here for things to be done. I like to check, you know, once things are done anyway. So there we are. We're done. Now I'm just going to type Docker space version to see what we got. There we go. Lowercase Docker version. That's exactly what I want. All right. Now we're going to do Docker compose. So just come over here. Triple click. Copy. Shift insert. That's downloaded now. Now we're copying the binary to the system path. A lot of Linux you'll find is copying and pasting commands into your terminal. So that's it. Once we've copied that to our system folder, all we need to do is just deal with the permissions with a chmod command. And I've already done that, it looks like. So all right, we've dealt with that with the permissions. Now we want to make sure this is running. All right, do docker compose dash dash version. I've got to change some of these things that I've typed over here. Good thing I do this before I <laughs> go live. All right, next up, we need to install Portainer. So I'm just mostly using the Portainer documents for this. It's really easy. First thing we need to do is just create our Docker volume for Portainer. There we go. Done. Now we need to download and install Portainer. This is the command for that. It's going to set it up for those ports. Uh, if you're doing, using something legacy, you might need port 9001, I believe. But I don't think that'll be any of you. We'll see. I don't know. As soon as this is done, that's it. We're done. OK, it's done. Are you ready to log in? So I'm going to grab uh, 9443 is the port. So now we just need to navigate to our server IP, which we can grab here again if we lost it. I'm not going to need DigitalOcean anymore, I don't think. So the IP address, colon 9443. The portainer automatically makes a certificate and uh, self signs it. So you'll need to put HTTPS up here. All right, there we go. Click on advanced and then accept the risk and continue. First time we log in, it's gonna ask us to put our username and password in. You can make this as secure as you want. I won't tell you how to live your life. And then I'm gonna uncheck the allow the anonymous collection of statistics, because that's what I do. All right, there we go. We are in Portainer. So when you first get started, you might be like, oh, this is another planet, what's going on here? Well, no worries. We're all gonna get going with this together. Just click on get started and it'll bring you to your environment. Now you can have multiple different environments, Kubernetes, whatever you could have. If the, if all these words mean nothing to you, then don't worry about it. You got This is your environment, right? And if you ever get lost, you just come back. Or the easiest thing to do is just come and click on the Portainer logo up here and then click on your environment. And that'll change the menu over here on the on the left. Now we can start to install stuff. This is where everything gets, gets open. Your, your entire world has been open to you. So let's come over here and click on app templates. And now we can see all the stuff that we can install. And this is where it starts to get really cool. It's like, well, Nginx is here, but I, I don't see Nginx Proxy Manager. Is it here? No, it's not. So how do we get Nginx to appear here as a template that we can just easily install? Now, if you want to see all kinds of different templates, the best thing to do is come down here and click on Settings. And right here we have, you know, URLs for our app templates. I've included two over here. There's plenty you can find online if you're looking for certain apps or different things. Uh, this one someone put together on Reddit and it's got a lot of apps because it combines a bunch of different lists. But I found this one to have more useful stuff. So this is the one that I use. Come over here and just paste it in. Hit Save Application Settings. And then when you come back to App Templates, you'll have all kinds of interesting stuff here. I think this is a really nice list. 
first thing I want to do is set up Nginx. So we're going to set up Nginx Proxy Manager to allow you to change things through a graphical user interface right in your browser. It's beautiful. That way, if you have no idea how to use Nginx, it's all going to be right there so you can just mess with it. So let's just get in Nginx going. Nginx Proxy Manager. That's what we want. Now, what this is going to do is install a whole bunch of well, it's going to install its container, but it, here's all the advanced options. You can click on that and it'll show you how everything's going to be mapped. Now, everything's done through the magical use of ports. So this one's going to take over port 80, 81, and 443. Now, if they come to your server just straight up through HTTPS or HTTP, they're going to go to Nginx first, and then Nginx is going to route them to where they're going. And then you can see down here, so down here it'll just show you uh, where things are going. You can set this up any way you like, but I like to leave it alone um, because it makes it just easier when I'm going from place to place and I want to back up things. All right, on the bottom, click Deploy Container and wait a few minutes. It has to download the image first of both this and this. So it's going to get Let's Encrypt and Nginx. After that, it's going to install the containers and then get them up and running. All this would take a little bit longer if you're just doing it with Docker, but that's all we had to do. Okay, it says Success. And then we go back to our containers here and you can see now we have Nginx Proxy Manager. I can go ahead and make this big. Now Nginx Proxy Manager is running on these three ports. The one for our interface is 81. So how we're, how we're gonna get there is just gonna go over here. I'm gonna copy this IP address again, put that in a new window and do colon 81. It's gonna be like, ah, not secure. We'll, we'll secure it, don't you worry. Now we gotta do HTTPS. Firefox just will not let me go to an HTTP site. So I had to open up Edge. Here I am. <laughs> So there we go. Now when you first come here, your name and password, I've got them right over here on, on the website. It's admin and example.com and change me. And then we can change it as soon as we get logged in. All right, so we logged in with admin and example.com. Now we're gonna change this. I'll let you put in any password you want. Just, you know, make sure it's nice and secure. All right, the first thing I wanna do is sling some friggin' SSL certificates. I don't wanna access this just with the IP address. I wanna use a website. And if you have a website that's registered, then you can use that. If you don't have a website that's registered, you need to register one and then go into your DNS management. Now we can have a little bit of fun. First thing I wanna do is I wanna add an A record. I'm gonna call this one Nginx. And then I'm gonna put the IP address there. So the domain that I'm using is called Power Crotch, a wonderful domain filled with potential. Now what this is gonna do is it's gonna make nginx.powercrotch.com go to our Nginx proxy manager. All right, now check this out. Come back over here. Nginx Proxy Manager. We've got proxy hosts. Let's add a new proxy host. I'll make it bigger so you can see it. Add a host. This is just HTTP for now. So we want our IP address to be 64.23.165.135. And then this port is our Nginx, so that's 81. And up here on the top, I'm gonna put the domain name we just created. And make sure you press enter or else it won't work. So nginx.powercross.com. And now we can get an SSL certificate just by coming over here and clicking on SSL, and then click on Request New SSL Certificate. Click on I Agree. We can force SSL too, by the way. And then Save. Give it a second. So this is going to look and say, hey, is this IP address correct for this? And it's going to say, yeah. And then it's going to be like, okay, we can issue an SSL certificate. And now when we go to nginx.powercrush.com, it'll bring us right back here. Now we can go back over to Firefox. And now look, we've got HTTPS. We can go back to Firefox and it'll let us. So I'm gonna put this over here so we can keep on adding proxy hosts. We're not gonna cover any of the rest of this stuff right now. So I also want one for Portainer. So let's add a new record, Portainer. Just that same IP address. So add proxy host and Portainer. I believe it's already HTTPS because it already set itself up that way. But let's try HTTP. Sometimes it takes a little fussing to figure out which settings are correct. And this is Portainer. There we go. I like to block uh, common exploits too, as, you know, when I'm doing this. Uh, we can issue SSL, and then I agree, yes. All right, now we've got our two things set up. Change this to HTTPS, since that didn't work. There we go. So sometimes you'll have to mess with those and get the right one. All right, check that out. Now we've got Portainer.PowerCrotch going and Nginx.PowerCrotch, both doing their things. So now let's have a little bit of fun and do something. Let's say you wanna run a website or something, you know, maybe you wanna do that. I don't know, there's all kinds of different things you can do because you're a game developer and you're, you don't wanna use Confluence or whatever. We've got all kinds of options for Wiki. 
my favorite is wiki.js so all right so i'm doing a wiki wiki.js but uh, you want to change your time zone you can look up the linux time zones but i'm just gonna leave it on amsterdam i don't care right now and then we can show advanced options what it's going to do so this is going to be mapping to port 3000 but i'll show you something sometimes you'll have multiple things that map to the same thing so we can say 3001 becomes 3000 that's very easy to do you can change these things i like to leave this alone like i said now let's deploy it and just see if this works all right after about 30 seconds it worked wiki.js showed up right here uh, and now we can just come over here and it's 3001 remember so let's make a thing over here called wiki why not now you could do c names and just make them a c name of one of these things and that would work but that's caused me some issues with ssl so i'm leaving it like this for now there we go wiki now we come over here to nginx we gotta add it here so wiki and it's port 3001 remember block common exploits this one needs websocket support ssl Let's request a new one. I'm going to force it. Why not? Sometimes forcing can help it go through anyway, but yeah. All right, there we go. And look at there. We've got our wiki.js. All right, this website is wiki.powercrush. Telemetry? No, thanks. This is all just kind of like teach a person how to fish type stuff. Because now that you know how to do this, you can install whatever you like. Amazing. Now you got yourself a wiki. One real thing you got to do now is head over here and make it dark. Oh, yes. Much better. So if you haven't used wiki.js... It's uh, really nice, like really, really nice. So there, that's up and running. If you wanna run a WordPress website, you know, you can just go up here and type WordPress. Word, let's see what comes up. There we go, WordPress. And then you title it WordPress, and then you can put in your database root pa password right here. Now this is for your MySQL database because it installs WordPress and that, so you can put in whenever you want. Blah, 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 blah. And that's really all there is to it. You just click on deploy the stack and it'll deploy everything. Now, I've already done it. Go to our containers. You'll see I've got WordPress down here. I've got a lot of stuff I've been messing around with. So I'm just going to start that up, show you how it works. Now, note that the port is 32780. You could have changed this to whatever you like, but 32780. So over here on Nginx Proxy Manager, there we go. So I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to make a domain name called blog.powercrotch.com. I'm also going to go back to my DNS and create blog.powercrotch.com and point it to the IP. Once that's done, we can assign an SSL certificate. I like to do force SSL and then we save it. And then when we go to blog.powercrotch, it'll bring us to our WordPress installation and you can set that up. Now, one thing that's slightly more advanced, if you can't find uh, you know, a template for something, you can always use a Docker compose file and then come over here, but that's gonna be for a separate video. You'll just drop the contents of the Docker compose file over here, kind of like I've done with this one. This is a WordPress version that I messed with before. So the easiest thing to do is just find some app templates and then figure out what you want to install. Now, obviously some of this stuff is not for web servers. Like you don't want to be installing Deluge or anything like that on your web server. You're not going to really need FileZilla or Firefox. This is all for more of like a home server environment or whatever, but there's a lot of things that you can use Portainer for. It's not just for web servers, but it's useful for that. It's useful for anything that has you know, Docker containers. Nextcloud could be cool. If you want to set up yourself a small little file sharing service, you'll just need more storage. I usually like to do this again on my home server. So home server video coming soon to talk about what we can do with this. And I'll give you some ideas of some things to install on your local Portainer instance. I'll reformat that article, add a few different things to it. But this video and that article will have everything you need to get up and running. Let me know what you think. And uh, one last thing, while we're still here, I'll tell you about what we have going on over at Epic Pants. So over at Epic Pants, we do have a few things on sale, like this beautiful mug. So you can sip your favorite beverage while you're working on your server. And then down here, we've got a whole bunch of stuff. I'll put one of these mice on sale. I think this one is what I'm gonna put on sale. So by the time this video comes out, this will be 50% off because this mouse is sort of styled after the old Intella mouse, which I feel like is a really comfortable mouse. So I'll make these 50% off for the next couple of weeks. So head on over there. The keyboard's probably still gonna be 50% off. So head over to epicpants.com, grab that up, and I'll see you in the comments. Ooh.